Here they are, Team HDC from the University of University College of Technology and Innovation. I got it right from Malaysia. Give them a hand. Good evening, everyone. We are Team HDC from Malaysia. My name is Keith. This is Chongyang and Yen Yen. Today, we will be here to present to you about food wastage. For the past few decades, food wastage has been an issue that hasn't been given much attention. Many of us are wasting food without knowing what are the consequences. Many of, sorry, this worrying trend shows no sign of slowing down. In 2009, half of all food produced worldwide are wasted. According to the United Nations, America being the largest continent, waste estimates food wastage that can feed up to 200 million people every day. 30.8% of, of, of food purchased in the UK is wasted. Urban Malaysians throw away close to 1 million kilogram of food waste from their kitchen, 40% more than what restaurants and retailers discard. This means that all resources, such as time, effort, and money, put into farming, manufacturing, and transportation of food goes to waste. Imagine where I have an apple, and in order to plant this fruit, I need trees, which requires land. And the production of land leads to deforestation. With fewer trees alongside the use of pesticides, more carbon dioxide is produced. Not only that, manufacturing of food to industrial means and transportation of food, which uses up fossil fuels, adds up to the mass contribution of carbon dioxide. Maintaining crops requires constant consumption of water all of which are wasted if we throw away our food. An environmental researcher from the University of California fears that by the year 2025, an estimated amount of one-third of the world's projected 8.3 billion people in the world will suffer from water shortage. You see, when we throw our food away, it ends up in our landfills. Over time, when this waste breaks down, it produces a gas called methane gas. Did you know that methane gas is eight times more harmful towards the ozone layer compared to carbon dioxide? Just picture how the apple I mentioned earlier is being thrown away. All the resources put into producing this apple goes to waste. Ultimately, all this adds up to the causes of environmental sustainability. There are, in fact, many ways that are recommended, recommended to us on how we should prevent food wastage, but till date, the most efficient and effective way is through meal planning. Since 35% of all food waste occurs in most households. Sustainable living is all about living in a positive environment and staying healthy at the same time, all of which begins in our homes. So when we were designing our solutions, we asked ourselves one question. How are we going to encourage more people to plan their meals and ultimately involve every family members in it? and not to mention that even children can be part of it. So, but in fact, we all, know that we, are, we all know that most people understand the importance of planning our meals, but we lack the motivation and time in actually doing so. So our goal is pretty straightforward, which is to make meal planning effortless and simple at the same time. By, and as an incentive to the solution, we are adding in features like meal suggestions and dietary guidelines to allow more people to eat right, to promote sustainable living, which is to stay healthy and at the same time help sustain the world we live in. So in general, we are targeting users who want to eat healthily, users who are always struggling about what is the right thing to cook for their family, and users who prefer planning their meals to eliminate bad choices of food and at the same time reduce food wastage. So now I will continue on my demo. Since we are trying to add in the home-oriented experience to our applications, that why you can, that's why you can see every family member has their own account. So now I will just log in as Mike Anderson. So as one of the key features is to allow users to click on any recipes, view on the general details, ingredient list, preparation methods, and even nutritional facts. But this is not all about Project Apple. 
Our goal is to simplify meal planning while considering people with different lifestyle, eating preferences, and even medical conditions. So one example would be when we visit a doctor, we tend to ask them what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat. So with Project Apple, we made it simple. So the user can just click on the ingredients, go to the medical conditions, and in this case, I'm suffering from common cold. So a list of ingredients will be suggested to you right away. The users can further read about the dietary guidelines on common cold to know more about what they are dealing with. So what we wanted to do is to make this platform to incorporate dietary guidelines that it, which is provided by doctors, dietitians, and nutritionists so that even the simplest approach on eating healthy and eating right is made accessible to everyone, everybody within clicks. So now what the users can do, they can just drag and drop their favorite ingredients to the box and drag the box back to the middle of the screen. And here, all the recipes that contains the ingredients will be shown right away. So this feature is actually good for people who want to make use of what is left in their refrigerators too. So by just dragging and dropping, they can know how can they deal with all those ingredients. And then the next thing, the users can just drag and drop again the recipes to the box and save it for future reference. And for people who don't even have time to plan their meals, we do have predefined plans too. An example, diabetic meal plan, here you can see from day one to day seven, everything is planned out. So the user can use it straight away or they can customize it by adding a new recipes, swapping with each other, deleting one existing recipes, or in any way they want. So another features I'm going to show you is what we call the nutrition pane. So here you can see at the left panel, it shows the total nutritional value for all the recipes here for day one. So what we wanted to do is we want to allow users to compare recipes based on nutritional value by just dragging one over another. So here you can see changes occurring in numbers, colors at the left panel. The green color actually indicates that there is an increase in value for the nutrient, while the red color indicates that there is a reduction. And while the orange color simply means that there is an additional nutrient comes with this recipe. So if the user like it, they can just release their finger and the item will be swapped. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the user profile. Every user has their own profile for them to customize on the maximum and the minimum values for the nutrient intake rule. So this is actually good for dietitians and nutritionists for them to customize the rule and let their patients bring back to home and plan their meals accordingly. And as for people who are allergic to certain food, like let's say for example, shellfish like shrimp is not good for a pregnant woman, we can just add shrimp to the list. And from now on, when the user goes to go to the recipe wheel, all the recipes that contain shrimp will be highlighted with an exclamation mark. So after everyone has selected their favorite recipes and favorite plans, the person who is in charge of meal preparation can come in and start creating a family plan. So by just dragging and dropping favorite recipes selected by their own family members, the plan can be done immediately. So after everything is done, they can just click on the view ingredient list and a shopping list will be generated. They can either print it, send to a supplier, and in this case, I'm sending it to my Windows Phone 7. And now I'm sending it to Jenna, which is currently nearby the store now. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm nearby the store now. So in my Windows Phone 7, I can see a notification regarding the shopping list I've just received. I can just click on it and use this as my checklist while shopping. I can check and uncheck whichever ingredient that has been bought. So the next thing I'm going to talk about will be the nutritional facts that printed on most food products. We know that it's compulsory for the government to put it there, but most of us never actually look at it and start compare among different brands of the same product. So what we did is we made it simple. With this barcode scanner, I can just capture the barcode of same product by different brands and let the program process it. Based on the information provided in the database, it will compare the nutritional value for me 
And from here, I can choose which brand fits me best. Not only that, I can further check on what I can cope with this product. Let's say I prefer this recipe. I can check on the ingredient list and even the preparation method. If I like it, I will just add it into my shopping list. The key thing here is that it will also tell me what else I need to buy since I'm already at the store. So for our future implementations, many things can be done with this platform if you plan. So since we are able to know what they have bought, what they have purchased previously, and what they have used to cook. And from there, we can estimate how much ingredients is left in their refrigerator. So for example, I've bought a dozen of eggs last week, and based on my meal plan, I only need seven of them. So the next time when, when, you, when, the next time when you are trying to add the eggs to your shopping list, the system might be able to tell you something like this. Hello, user. There might be a possibility that there are still five eggs left in your refrigerator. You might want to reconsider or check before you purchase. So a simple message like this is able to bring a significant change on, how, on our buying behavior. So to make sure all the data is reliable, we, we have to make sure all our sources are trustworthy too. So for product nutritional facts, for example, in Malaysia, we can work with Codex Malaysia. They are the one who is in charge of checking and verifying nutritional facts printed on food products. So since we are allowing users to create their own content, like recipes and upload, we have to make sure those are reliable too. And so for now, we are not allowing them to upload recipes that contains nutritional facts, while certified dietitians and nutritionists can do so if they register with us. And, but we do provide the chance for normal users to know how much nutrients, nutrition value is in the recipes that they have created their own self, which they cook it often. So they can either request for a nutritional check service from us, which we can charge, or we are constantly providing free checking service to recipes that are being featured or are very popular among the community. So, but we, it's part of our plan to make sure our platform is customizable, extensible, fitting people with different cultural backgrounds, especially people with different eating preference. So what we do is that we place all the components on the cloud so that through web services, it is extensible to multiple platforms. So even more, we can do API for third-party developers to build apps on top of it. So with the data database that we have that consists of plans, recipes, and dietary guidelines, more health and diet-related applications can be built. And again, together, we help save the world. <laughs> OK, so the technologies that we are utilizing, uh, .NET Framework 4.0, we are building a desktop application that uses well, WPF 4.0 running on Windows 7 with multi-touch enabled. So for the mobile applications, we are using Silverlight on Windows Phone 7. And the back-end database, we are using secure SQL Azure. So development tools, we are using Expression Band 4 and Visual Studio 2010. So uh, basically, there are two approaches that we intend on commercializing our solution. The first approach is through licensing soft our software to retailers, to supermarkets, and to food suppliers. We have indeed spoken to the largest local wholesaler in Malaysia, they're called Maidin, and they've shown their interest in using our solution as a tool to guide their customers in shopping wisely. The second approach is through selling as a service. From here, we are building a community that involves the recipes publisher, retailers, the end users, the non-government bodies, and government bodies. Each group in this community plays an important role. The recipe publishers provide and sell recipes to users, basically creating a platform for recipes publisher to publish sample content to advertise hard copy of their books. From there, users will purchase necessary ingredients from the retailers, which we will have multiple retailers to ensure that we have maximum coverage. The non-government bodies and government bodies are responsible in providing necessary information that the application requires, such as public health messages, dietary guidelines, and campaigns. All in all, we will be gaining revenue by monthly subscription fees by the retailers based on their turnovers or charges to bill taxing. So with this project, we are constantly thinking about how can we bring more impact to this world. 
changing the way we live in. And with every household, treating this, treating this tool as a necessity to them. So I would like to share with you all what we find most interesting. <laughs> 